While using RCM inside Resolve, we've used the RUC2100 ST2084 color space. Now, RUC2100 is based on the VT2100 International Standard that was designed for HDR. ST2084 allows us to use a PQ curve. However, you're not limited to a PQ curve when working in HDR. You can also use an HLG curve. An HLG stands for Hybrid Log Gamma, and that combines a linear curve for the lower half and a logarithmic curve for the upper half of the value range. An HLG curve allows an SDR and an HDR range of values to be broadcast simultaneously in the same signal. Therefore, the signal can be read by SDR display or an HLG supported HDR display. On the SDR display, the 0 to 0.6 range on a 0 to 1 scale is displayed with no changes. However, anything above 0.6 is compressed down to the standard limit for SDR. On the HLG supported HDR display, the full 0 to 1 range is shown without any changes. There's no compression in the highlights. So HLG offers a way to store an SDR and an HDR grade within a single render. And the advantage is it doesn't require any special equipment as you would have with Dolby Vision. Resolve supports HLG through RCM and ACES. Let's take a look. Right now I have a new project where I brought in the red shot and the Alexa LF shot, but I have not applied any grading. So I can go ahead and change the color space. You'll see that there are several HLG options close by. For example, Rec2100 HLG. There's also a scene variation, and this is a good time to talk about that. If you see a color space with scene in parentheses, it indicates a scene referred space. And a scene referred space is one that does not manipulate the camera data. It tries to read it as is from the camera sensor. Now, if you're using a raw clip, it doesn't really change anything. However, if you're using a non-raw clip, the scene option will be slightly different from the non-scene version. Now, there's also a scene variation for Rec2100 ST2084. Let's see how it might change. For now, I'll leave it set to the non-scene variation. I'll click Cancel here. I'm going to switch over to my Alexa LF shot, which is non-raw. And then we'll take a look at the scopes. I'll go back to Project Settings. I'll move this over so we can see. And then I'll switch to the scene version for both the output and the timeline color space. I'll click Save, but watch what happens to the scopes. Everything moves down. So with a non-raw shot, there is a slight variation in the result. If we're using a raw shot, no change. It's already raw. It's already using the data as is from the sensor. Let's go back and take a look at HLG again. Now, aside from the scene variation, there's also a Rec 2020 version and a Rec 709 version. Now, remember that Rec 2100 uses the same color gamut as Rec 2020. However, Rec 2100 was designed in 2016 for HDR, whereas Rec 2020 was designed in 2012 and is intended for SDR. So if you do want to stay in HDR and you see a Rec2100 option, use that. Now, if you're wondering what the ARIB STD B67 suffix is, that refers to the international standard for HLG. In any case, I will select Rec2100 HLG for both the timeline and the output and click Save. You'll notice there's a slight change to the scopes with this non-raw shot. And that's because we are now using an HLG curve instead of the PQ curve. So again, a combination of linear and logarithmic. Now in terms of grading, the goals are the same, but because we are using that different curve, there'll be a slightly different response in terms of the controls. In any case, we'll do some quick grading here. And use the scopes as reference. Now here we're still left to the 10 bit range. So it might be useful to switch over to the HDR scopes. Again, that's in Preferences, in the User tab, under Color. And the range changes. Now again, it can be hard to imagine what's really going on here. If you are using HLG, then you'll want to have an HLG HDR monitor hooked to your system. However, for a quick preview, you can always apply a 3D LUT. And under 3D Color Viewer Lookup Table, there is an HLG option. You can see HLG to Gamma. 
For example, Gamma 2.4. If I turn that on and click Save, a very different result. The parts will look very overexposed, or probably over the 100 nit level. So I'll make a quick adjustment. Again, you'll want to look at the HLG monitor. I do have the option of adding an additional node and activating the special HDR mode for that. However, because we're using the HLG curve, instead of a PQ curve, the advantage of the HDR mode is not as great. Remember that the HLG curve combines a linear portion with a logarithmic portion, so it's not a purely logarithmic space. So let's assume this is a good enough grade. Well, one nice thing about HLG is I do not need to render out any separate metadata. I can simply go to the Deliver tab and choose a format that supports HDR. For example, something that has at least 10 bits in high quality. Now, I also mentioned you can use ACES with HLG. Let's take a look at that. I'll switch from RCM to ACES CCT, and then I could change the output device transform. You'll see it's already selected here, but there are several HLG options. And these are nearby the REC 2020 ST2084 options. So you have REC 2020 HLG, the nit limit, and here it's 1000 nits. Now there's no REC 2100 option listed here. However, REC 2020 HLG 1000 nits works because choosing the correct color gamut, it's HLG, and I have a 1000 nit limit, which is far above the standard 100 nit limit of SDR. You can see there's also a P3 D65 limited variation, and we talked about that in an earlier video. Once you switch to an HLG option, you're ready to work in HLG with an ACES. One thing to keep in mind is, because I switched the color science from RCM to ACES, I need to check my color space interpretation for my various clips. I'll just double check the Alexa LF shot. I want to make sure it's still set to something appropriate, like Alexa. Now you see the result of the grading looks a bit different. It's usually a good idea to select your color space before you start to grade. But there's a few ways to work with HLG inside Resolve. We'll take a look at a third way to create an HDR and an SDR grade simultaneously, and that's to use HDR10 or HDR10+, and we'll discuss that in the next video. If you'd like to take a look at this project in its current state, it's saved as hlgsetup.drp.